on behalf of the elders, I wanted to provide you with an update on some important actions that we are taking related to our church finances and address the news of a lawsuit that came out yesterday. Um, I have to tell you that when I got this news yesterday, it was a, <laughs> a moment of reflection and I will tell you it was kind of discouraging. Um, but when I think about what I believe the Lord is doing in this place, and I think about this worship that we just entered into, I'm encouraged. My, we didn't talk about it, but uh, going on right now, our young adults are at a retreat in East Texas. My two oldest kids are there right now being poured into. There is good work happening in this place. I want to tell you, personally, in spite of the news, I still give to Gateway Church. Uh, I am all in on this church, and the elders are all in on this church. But we're all in on what God wants to do in this church. It's not about protecting an institution. It's about being obedient. As the, as the elders have had an opportunity to meet with many of you these past several months, some of you have raised concerns about Gateway's financials and stewardship. We are grateful for your willingness to express your concerns. We remain committed to truth and integrity, and we welcome any one of you to raise specific concerns at any time. Over the past several months, we, the elders, and the campus pastors have tried to respond to your concerns that you have emailed and called us about. Many of these concerns were general in nature. Some of them were based on rumors on social media, and most of them have been easy to address in a conversation. And while we have been able to answer many of your questions, we do acknowledge that yesterday's news about a lawsuit, a lawsuit raises more questions and concerns. So I think it's important that I share some very relevant facts with you. Gateway has had an independently audited financial, has had independently audited financial statements since 2005. The firm who performs our audit is a nationally recognized auditing firm for nonprofit organizations. The name of that firm is Cape and Kraus. These audits have demonstrated that our finances are managed consistent with best practices, and we have never had any wrongdoing revealed through these audits. Several weeks ago, a former employee brought several financial-related issues to our attention that we felt needed further investigation. In spite of these allegations being over 10 years old, Haynes and Boone's is looking into those areas right now. We take it seriously. To this point, we have not been able to corroborate any of those specific allegations, but this work is still ongoing. Frankly, I was hopeful to deliver a report to you later where we combined a summary of what Haynes and Boone is doing and report on the finances, but the news from yesterday forced us to come to you earlier than we had planned. Like other concerns that have been raised, we are interested in learning the truth. If there is no wrongdoing here, we will tell you. If there is wrongdoing here, we will tell you, and we will fix it. At this point, we are not aware of any financial wrongdoing. And we want you to know that we, your elders, and the church staff understand and embrace the sacred and biblical duty we have to steward the dollars given to Gateway. So your questions would be, what actions are you taking? One of the most common concerns that has been raised has been a desire for more transparency around the finances, and we have been working on a plan for that. We are in the process of joining an organization called ECFA, which stands for Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. 
You can clap. I think it's a good sound. This will add an additional layer of accountability to our finances. ECFA has several requirements, one of which includes publishing a financial overview to the church. We have been working on that, by the way. We continue to work on it, and we hope to publish something for you soon. The ECFA application process does take some time, and they are wanting us to complete the Haynes and Boone inquiry prior to granting Gateway membership, which I believe is a fair ask. Additionally, we do intend to publish our bylaws soon. Our bylaws need updating. For example, Prior to June 14th, they did not require a majority of non-staff elders. We clearly need a majority of non-staff elders on the eldership. We will release these bylaws when the changes are completed. We have not wanted to create more confusion by releasing a document that is a work in process. Secondly, even though we have a full audit done every year, in order to provide additional assurance, we have decided to hire a third-party independent accounting firm to complete a forensic analysis of our finances, which will include investigating the specific allegations of this last week. We will report back to you when this work is complete. You have been very generous over the years in providing your financial support. Your financial support has changed the lives of many people. Many of you can afford to give. But the truth is that a great many of you have dug deep and given when it was very tough to do so. Scripture states that those in positions of leadership have a higher, in fact, I would say a sacred responsibility to operate and lead with ethics and integrity. This is our clear spiritual duty. And this responsibility is very clear to us. You have done your part in giving. And those of us in leadership must ensure that your precious financial resources are protected and used to build and further the kingdom of God. Your elders commit to operating with best practices in financial processes and integrity. And when any allegation is made, we will investigate it. And we will take allegation or take action on any of these allegations that are determined to be true. It is clear to us as elders, and I get it that you probably see it as well, the Lord is doing a transformative work here at Gateway. We're not resistant to what he wants to do here. If there are things that he desires to transform in this house, I want him to do it. If there's things that he wants to transform in my life, I want him to do it. These past few months have not been easy. But I don't want us to go through these last few months and only accomplish part of what he has for us to accomplish. Our heart is to accomplish everything that he has for us to do during this season. As I was preparing my remarks for today, I thought of Philippians 2, 3 through 4. It's particularly instructive to us as elders in this season. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interest, but also for the interest of others. We are here to serve you. And know that as your elders, we are constantly, I would say sometimes hour by hour, before the Lord seeking his direction for this place. We are submitted to him.